Why should objects or innovative ideas be used for one function only? In modern societies, there is division of labor. Functions are increasingly being separated from one another. That means that one goes to restaurants to eat, there are youth clubs for the youth and senior clubs for the elderly. Every function has its own space. Shopping has to be done in a store. Books are loaned from the library. Work is done at the office and for watching TV you are sitting on your own couch. Modern society's separation and isolation has something to do with that division of functions. Everyone sits in his or her own space. Why do we like the small French villages that we know from vacation? The elderly and the young sit together, some are reading, others are playing. In the middle of all this, a barber is cutting someone's hair. In many places, our professional world is rationalized and differentiated to such an extent that there are now chances to reintegrate functions. Some years ago, we did a workshop on the subject of operating hours. The participants impartially reflected about the potential for double utilization of buildings. What else could one organize in supermarkets? Why are law offices not turned into art exhibits during the evening? Why couldn't a bed store be used for test sleeping on mattresses or even as an unconventional hotel? Operating with more than one function has impressive economic advantages. You don't have to build, furnish, illuminate or heat a new space. Fantasy is the only thing that matters. In addition to economic advantages, reconnecting or reintegrating what was separated also serves a good social purpose. It counteracts isolation, bringing people together who would otherwise have little to do with one another. Let's take nature as an example for finding multiple applications for things. It seldom occurs that something has only one single function. Biologists and ecologists inform us that one blade of glass has at least six functions. Applying that concept to an entrepreneurial idea, you should ask yourself, what types of things are used in other places that I could otherwise use for free? I don't mean reusing waste, but rather having a good eye for things intended for other processes that I can reuse for my own ends with the lowest investment possible. In nature, multi-utilization is the rule, and the widest variety of cooperation forms have been produced to facilitate mutual economic utilization. While at university, I did not have my own apartment. I lived in student dormitories or moved in with friends. That provided me not only with a lot of variety, but also with a high level of luxury. There was nothing to set up or to pay for, and I got to know many things that I would not have been exposed to in my own apartment, like certain books, art, or even everyday objects. My hosts were also content, for I treated everything with care, watered the flowers and gave them a generous gift upon my departure. That gift cost only a fraction of what I would have had to pay for rent. It was also a luxury not to have to deal with landlords, electricity and gas bills, bureaucratic things towards which every one of us fosters an aversion. Living out of one suitcase for a long time and later being able to accommodate an entire move in a Volkswagen Beetle is a bit like hitchhiking. Before purchasing your own car, you meet a lot of new people and every day is like a grand adventure. Later you start driving yourself and then become busy with repairs and bills for tax and insurance. Then come the worries that every unusual sound provokes in its owner, indicating a potential need for repair work. It's not about money here but on the time expenditure and paperwork, the complexity. That's why my ideas center on considerations how to reduce expenditure. I don't mean freeloading, but rather intelligent new combinations that create win-win situations for everybody involved.